<laughs> All right, my friends, today we are going to make something amazing. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe it. Now, actually, we're going to add parameters to a family today. Parameters that, well, when you guys are making families out there, you don't actually have to add parameters to your families. Mmm, go figure. You only add parameters to families if your family needs parameters. So let's say your family doesn't come in different sizes, so you wouldn't add a dimensional parameter to it. Or it doesn't come in any other colors or materials, so you don't add a material parameter. Or maybe your family comes as is with no add-ons, or a good example would be like a chair. If it doesn't come with um, like the uh, arms and it's just a seat, then don't make a parameter so the arms can turn on and off. So I'm just telling you, before we even get started, do not add parameters to a family when you don't need to. Just leave it static and let people use it in Revit. Okay, that being said, let's open Revit up and I'm going to show you how to make and or add parameters to a family. All right, here we go. Put my face over here. There we go. And open up Revit. I think I'll put my face right there. That's a good spot. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Let's make a new family. And we're going to go File, New, Family. And we're going to make something unbelievable today. It's called, we're going to go down and we're going to use, hey, there's a lot of, of um, whatchamacallits, templates here. We're going to go to generic and we're going to open that up. Wait for it. Today's object that we're going to make is a box. <laughs> All right. We are going to there, wait, wait for it. There, there it is. Bam, done. We are done making that amazing family. Let me just show you what it looks like in 3D. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Is that just dynamic or what? Look at it. I know you're loving it. Okay. Is that beautiful or what? Okay. Just so happens that this is my little box. And if I load it into, wait, I'm going to hit save. Save. Save it. Temporarily, I'm going to save it in my desktop. Okay. Bad place. Don't, don't do what I do. Do what I say. Go save it in a real place. But I, today, I'm going to save it on my desktop. Okay, I'm going to call it box. Ooh. Okay, save. <clears throat> and now that I've saved it, it's ready to load into my project. And I'm going to put one right in front of my building. In fact, I'm going to open up my building here. This is a cute little building. In fact, in 3D, there it is. Very nice. And right down here on the sidewalk, we're about to see a box. So I'm going to go to my insert, no, architecture, component. And the last thing you just made is the next thing to be added. Wait for it. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is, the box. Is that beautiful? Now look, if I click on it, it doesn't have any parameters. <clears throat> it's, <laughs> okay, wait, zero inches from the first floor. There it is. Oh, it's hovering a little bit because my ground is a little bit low. But get over it, people. There's my box. Okay, beautiful box. When I click on it, look, it doesn't have any parameters. Like none. There's it. The, the, what level it's on. And so, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look here at the type properties, type parameters. Hey. It defaults at zero when I place it, but it doesn't have any other properties. So here we go. I'm going to start adding parameters to this. You guys can enjoy it. Here we go. I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to edit the family. There we go. Okay, there's our box. Now, one thing, sometimes, let's just say this has a property of being taller or shorter. So I'm going to click on it. And over here on the right, you'll notice extrusion starts at the ground. And the extrusion ends at 1, 9, and whatever I dragged it up to. I can type in like 3 feet. And take a look. It changed to 3 feet. I can change that to 5, 6 feet. 
Yes, look at that. It gets taller. So amazing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> just want to show you at the far right side. Look over there. Look over there. Far right side of this is a tiny little button. If I click on that, I can add a parameter to it, and I'm going to make a new parameter. So I would click this little piece of paper down here. It, it stands for new parameter, and I get the dialog box. New parameter is box height, okay, box height. I'll make it an instance parameter so that we can, that an instance parameter means if, if I have five boxes in there, or I can click on one and make it three feet, and one and make it two feet, and one and make it one foot tall. But if I make this box height the type parameter, all five would go to the dimension that I type. So I'm going to leave it as an instance parameter. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, box height is now associated with the top of that box. That's how simple it is. No, I'm serious. I'll hit save. <clears throat> Do you want to? Yes, I want to overwrite it. I'm in charge here. Okay, load into the project and close. Ta-da! Overwrite the existing one. Now, here we go. Look at that. I'm going to put another one right here next to it, and there's a third one. Whoa, these are amazing boxes. Okay, I'm going to make this back one. Would you look there? Now, under dimensions, there is a parameter. This one's going to go six feet tall. This one over here is going to go down to six inches. Bam. Okay, so you can adjust the heights of these now. Simple as that. Okay, so... Suppose this box came in different colors or materials. Let's add that parameter. So I'm going to pick on one of them. doesn't matter which one. Edit family. <clears throat> I'm going to pick my box here. And if you look over, the material is set to be by category. That means it's generic whatever material. And I could bring materials into this family and assign it a static material like wood or concrete or brick or whatever. And then that's what it always would be when you bring it into your project. But if I want to add a parameter back to this so that the user back in the project can change it, I would do something very similar to what we did with the dimension. Come over here to material. Follow all the way to the right, and there's a little box. If you click on that, it wants a new param I mean, a parameter here, so I'm going to click on it. And this is the box material. Okay, box material. I'll make it an instance parameter again, just for fun, <clears throat> so we can change each one. So I'm going to say, okay, and it's done. And if I load this, now I'm going to save. Yes, overwrite it. Gosh. Quit asking me. Okay, load into project and close. Overwrite the existing version. And so look, ready for this? If I click that, now look over here, the box material. I can set the material right here. So this big one is, sure enough, wait for it, materials come up. What did I say earlier? Precast. Precast concrete. Oh my goodness, that one's precast concrete. Look at that. Done. And this one right here, I can change that one. Whoops, cancel. This one changes material to tile. I like tile. <clears throat> These little blue tiles are always my favorite. Four inch blue tiles. There they are. Now that's looking really good. And this one could be wood. I'm just going to change it to wood. Mm <laughs> hmm. Whatever. Oh, wait. Red carpet. I like that. Red carpeting. Okay. So that one's red carpeting. So there we go. <clears throat> That's how you add dimensional um, parameters and material parameters. But how about an on-off switch to a feature on this box? Well, let's go make a feature first. Okay. Edit family. All right. Here's our little box. Okay. And let's just suppose that we had another little box. This, this box comes with another small box that's, um, see that little guy? Oh, isn't that cute? I'm going to put that little box up on top here. Okay, there we go. Isn't that cute? Oh, my goodness. That's a way to do it right there. Now, that little guy <clears throat> has 
sometimes this box comes with the little box on top and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to set a switch to turn that little box on or off. Okay. So when I click on the little box, I'm going to come over here and look, there's a parameter already called visible for that object. It already was there for the big box. We just didn't mess with it. But I'm going to click on the little guy. And the default, you see the checkbox? That default means it is always on unless I give the, um, it's static that way, unless I give the parameter change ability back to the project, to the user. So I'm going to do that. You follow that little box over. There's a tiny little box on the far right. Click on it and make a new parameter. And this one is little box on top and instance parameter and say okay okay and now I've given that the ability to turn on and off simple as that huh save yeah overwrite and load it back into the project and close it so here we go guess what that little box is visible on all of them by default oh isn't that gorgeous but on this one made out of carpet if you scroll down, there it is, little box on top. Uncheck the box, off. Whoa, whoa, that was amazing. Okay, and it doesn't come with the concrete one either. So I'm gonna uncheck that one. There it is, off. So guys, it's too easy to add parameters to um, your families. <clears throat> so I want you guys to practice that. Build something amazing, more amazing than a box. I know it's going to be hard to be very difficult. But if your family has parameters, you can add a dimensional parameter now or a material parameter to part of your object or on off switches. Um, the, uh, there, there's many more things we can do with um, parameters, and I'll go into that deeper on another Revit tip. But for today, I want you to go practice those things. Just try it once and see how it goes. If you have any trouble, just um, leave your, your issues down in the comment section below, and we'll go from there. And uh, as always, happy Reviting. Talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.